All right. Uh, let's uh, spend the rest of our time talking about the White Lotus. So Oof. epic TV show. I will let you mm-hmm. take it away from here. Just kind of maybe do an overview of what you think of the show. And and then I'll probably just uh, ask you about some of the characters a little bit. Yeah. Um, quick overview. Season one. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, okay. I didn't. I haven't watched. I've watched the first episode of season two. I haven't watched season one since way back when. I haven't rewatched it, so I might struggle on some character names. Might refer to them as the guy, the husband, the douchebag friend, like the douchebag husband type of people. Um, but basically, it's just a, it's a story about you know a group of generally wealthy people that are going on vacation and uh, you know really good representations of like people with money, people without a month without money. Um, how their lives kind of commingled together um, and just the craziness that kind of ensues during their vacation. Um, usually at the beginning of every season, at least from season one to two, you know, in that first scene, we find out someone dies and then we're kind of on our, you know, we're just getting ready to figure out who that person is the whole, throughout the first and second season. Um, I don't know about you, but I definitely was a little bit shocked who died in the first season. I don't know. Were you expecting that overall? Um, no. I I was kind of thrown off by the whole death thing in the first season. Like, I didn't... Yeah. I kind of thought maybe it was going to be more of a black... It was a black comedy, but I don't know. I thought maybe there was going to be like a... um Like a murder... Like something yeah. sinister going on, and it really wasn't. That, yeah, that's kind of what I thought at the beginning too. And it, I always thought it was, you know, you get that like, you get that point where they're showing the cast and going into the plane, right? And then it's really, it's never mentioned, or there's no other like flash, like flash forward, like parts of the show either. It's kind of like that that thing happened at the beginning of the show, and then it's never really like touched on or spoken of or like into that you know going forward it's just kind of how it all plays out but yeah i mean armand absolute fucking legend so funny <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well i'm so glad you wanted to talk about this show man our uh i consider the white lotus to be my top show right now i'm telling everybody that i meet to watch it and yeah, yeah, Armand, it's so sad that he, uh, we should just say that we're going to have spoilers for the White Lotus moving oh, yeah. forward. Um, yeah, 100%. But so from th- from this moment on, there will be 100 percent spoilers for the White Lotus season one and two. So if you don't want that, don't listen. But when we find out that Armand was the character that died, I was devastated because um, I wanted him to be in season two. Like he's the funniest part. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he and was, maybe they'll do a a prequel someday. I don't know, but yeah, I mean that's definitely possible. But uh, yeah, I was also devastated when he died. Uh, watching him take that shit in the dude's suitcase though was uh, <laughs> <laughs> phenomenal TV. Uh, not a, not at all what I expected was going to happen right there. But I was just like, what the fuck is this show? It's so good. Um, but you know, after you know season one, I was really excited for season two, and so far I haven't disappointed at all with the uh, with the quality and like the storytelling. One thing I want to mention though is that uh, I'm a really big fan of Sopranos, so uh, Mike, Michael Michael Rampelli, I think I'm saying his name right. He played Chrissy uh, Christopher on the Sopranos. Um, you know, Tony is kind of uh, his nephew. Um, he was my favorite character on that show. So getting to see him in a different TV show has really been cool too. And I really liked his character a lot. He, he plays, um, again, I struggle with names. He plays uh, the, the, the uh, uh, Italian dad. That's like okay. banging the two, hooker, the two uh, hookers in the first couple episodes. <laughs> so. Yes. So I have not seen The Sopranos, but I, I do know which guy you're talking about. Um, and he's great. Like, honestly, everybody in season one and two, there's really no characters that I don't like. 
And that's crazy because mm-hmm. there's so many different characters. Um, season one, when it opens and you got Armand and the rest of the hotel staff, they're standing on the beach waving and you got the guests coming. Mm-hmm. And then Armand's talking. He's kind of like coaching the new girl and like talking about how you have to be the right kind of happy or whatever it is. Not too happy, not too sad or whatever. But uh, and then he looks down and he's like, what is that? A mayonnaise glob on your tit? Because she, she has this, like, <laughs> yeah. huge glob of mayonnaise on her shirt. <laughs> he's like, he, like, he's like, oh, like just a little, like, like... <laughs> <laughs> I, I think he, he takes out a napkin and d- starts dabbing it for her but then he just has her like hold the champagne in front of it or something like that yeah yeah and then she ends up like <laughs> her water <laughs> breaking that first episode too. Yeah. he has no <laughs> idea that she's thing. pregnant yeah. uh it like oh my god okay so what did you think about um So Shane and Rachel, oh, before I go into the characters, I wanted to say I am obsessed with the show and I've watched a YouTube video that I will link in all the different things, but it's like a 45 minute interview with the director and it brings on all of the cast from season one and it, it aired after the first episode. So there's really no, there's only spoilers for like after episode one or like that include episode one stuff, but They don't talk about anything that happens after episode one of season one. And the director brings on every single cast member and he really talks about what he was going for. And he says what he was really trying to do is show the cultural like um, like you said, where we see the rich people. And it's like some of the guests come in and they're very wealthy. And then we see the hotel staff. And what their lives are like as they try to put on this amazing experience. But the director was saying, like whether they're staff or whether they're rich person and some some of the people that come as a rich person, like. um, What's her her name is Rachel Alexandria Daddario. She is actually married to a rich person, so she's a guest, but really she doesn't have her own money. So she mm-hmm. has a, her own dynamic, but the director was saying how every single character has like a negative thing that we all get to see play out, whether they're rich or poor. And it's like a vice or it's like they're stealing or they're greedy or whatever it is. Like every person has a thing. And so now I'm trying to find whatever that is in, with the characters in season two. But okay. Um, it's like, no matter what, nobody's life is perfect and everybody like Shane. So what did you think of Shane and Rachel? Shane's the douchebag guy that gets in the fights with Armand about how he doesn't feel like he got the right room. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, he's like, he can't let something go. It's probably his, I mean, his advice or, um, probably ridiculously power hungry kind of guy who probably struggles with relationships, but um, I actually really I thought it was super funny. I mean, um, I know you're kind of supposed to hate Shane, um, but I tended to love him. Just like I love to watch him argue with our mom the whole season, and like the fact that you know he couldn't get what he wanted, but he still would re- like he refused to stop. He went, he had no care how much it was going to take me. Like. I'm gonna get into the goddamn. Was it the pineapple sweet or something like that that he was? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he's like, I'm getting in that fucking pineapple sweet. I still think one of the best moments though of the whole show for me was when Armand was trying to like make it up to Shane, and he's like, Oh, I'm gonna set you. He's like, I'm gonna set you up on this, you know, boat ride dinner uh, with you and your <laughs> with your wife, and then. <laughs> The Stifler's mom. I'm struggling on her name. Uh, her uh, her name's Tanya. Tanya McQuad. Tanya, yeah, Tanya is out on the boat, scattering <laughs> her mother's ashes and just like <laughs> crying in a way that I have never heard before. <laughs> it was just so amazing. <laughs> just a great show. So fun. But yeah, like Tom. Um, go ahead. No, you go. You go. 
yeah, but I was just saying that, yeah, it was, she is, but I think that uh, Tanya, between seasons one and two, has been Sarah's favorite character on the show overall. Okay. Um, she thought, she, uh, at least from, like, she thinks she's the, like, probably the most funny person on the show overall. Um, loved her in season one, she, she, and I think, yeah, I think she's even better in the next season, for sure, for me, at least. She's better for me in season two. Like, she's, I kind of got past, like, there was just something about her I wasn't into, and I'm way past that, and now I'm just, like, laugh out loud every time she's on screen. I don't know what it was. I think I just, like, locked on to Armand and some of the other characters, and I wasn't really into her storyline, but she has the, she's, like, the queen of awkward moments, and I wasn't, I just wasn't super into the whole, like, um she was going to help out the other girl start like a spa. But anytime she was talking about throwing her mom's ashes, it was so funny. And like in season two, when she's with Greg and she's just complaining about her life and like when they're having sex on the bed and she throws them off from her. That's so (laughs) funny. I think my favorite scene of her so far is when she said when her and Greg are going to dinner and her assistant is not supposed to be there and she's having dinner on like the other side of the room and you just kind of like pants her and she's just like mouthing the words go to your room and like her assistant's just like what the fuck <laughs> it's just so yeah. funny <laughs> but yeah she's been amazing I love her so much um I think another storyline that I'm really liking it's a little bit more dark but I love uh, Ob- the girl from Parks and Rec, Aubrey. Um, her, uh, her, oh, her name's uh, Harper. 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 She's yeah. she's Harper in this, yeah. Yeah. Um, her storyline with her husband and the other couple, I think it's been probably. I love um, that other side of it, but I think that the the four tandem there is probably the probably been for me the most exciting part of this. I love just watching their dynamic together. It's been pretty great so far. Yeah, no, I agree. They're the most interesting. I kind of like the whole, the three Italians and Porsche. You know, they're yeah. good. The grandpa that's farting is funny. Um, yep. But like the like you said, the four, the two couples. Um, and really, Harper, uh, I can't think of her name in real life, but that actress is nailing it. You know, I mean, she's so good. Um, So I know that Sarah feels like she, your wife, Sarah, feels like she kind of represents her in real life and or she identifies yeah. with her a little bit. I, I find that she is, so I'm just talking about Harper, not Sarah, but the character Harpa, Harper, to me, she's like a little bit, um, like she's not a people pleaser. She's not going to say something just to make your feelings happy. Like if you want to, if you say you're not into, um, politics or you didn't vote, she's just going to like roll her eyes at you and be like, that's ridiculous. You know, she's not going to be like, Oh no, she's not going to go along with it or act like it's no big deal. And so to me, but also remember in the beginning, she like, wasn't, remember when they first got off the boat and they tried to offer her champagne and she was like, no, I don't want it. And I was just like, okay, like that's kind of like standoffish and rude a little bit. Cause you kind of have to, For sure. if you're going on, if you're going on vacation with another couple, which I have done for three and a half weeks, you, you almost just have to go out of your way to be nice at times. Otherwise it's just like uncomfortable all the time. And so, I'm always like, damn, Harper is just intense, but I don't mean to say that that's Sarah. I know Sarah identifies with her. And so that's just my take on that character, but she's also my favorite uh, to watch. Yeah. She has been probably my favorite to watch too so far, I would say. Um, Yeah. I mean, very similar, like understanding for me, why for me, uh, she, I just think her like relationship with her husband is really interesting because they find themselves all like she's always comparing their 
like relationship to what the what she sees with the other couple. And she thinks that, you know, they're completely fake. They don't really love each other. You know, the guy is always cheating on his wife with like tons of women and hit her his wife is kinda of doing her own thing. You know, I don't really think she's cheating, but she's kinda of doing her own thing, living her life because she doesn't really think that her husband really loves her. Which from what I think we've seen so far, if you if you're up to date, seems pretty accurate. Um, but I mean, she just she just doesn't seem to be someone that's super comfortable, you know, in her own skin. She wants to she wants to feel probably vindicated from her choices. Um, that's why probably she's comparing herself to other relationships so much. She's that's kind of what I that's what I think so far about her. Um, I mean, in the last episode, when she finds the unused Duramax on the couch, I think her whole world is kind of crumbling down a little bit. And, me, you know, me and Sarah are watching that together. And I just couldn't believe that she just kind of, like, held that in the entire episode. Like, if it was me, or, like, in a, in a, or if it was, like, my wife, and we were talking about that, like, you found that. How do you not just, like, explain? Load and be like, what the fuck is this right here? I got my right, hand. Right. Yeah, she, she, just, she just like picks it up, kind of like is kind of having like a meltdown internally, but really, you know, she doesn't seem to know how to express anything that she, she that she's really feeling or getting too deep, and, or she just hasn't isn't at the place yet where she wants to do it. I don't know, but like this whole dynamic with her thinking that she's been cheated on in the last episode I think it's just going to get even more crazy as it goes along because I you think that she's going to say something but I mean given what we've seen so well far, she, doesn't, so. She, she doesn't but she leaves it on the counter in the bathroom and then goes oh to that's bed. right and we don't know what happens because right. it's like the next episode we'll find out you know yeah I just but she left that. it on the sink um, but I don't know. Don't I kind of felt like, well, that's hard. I mean, I'm just speculating, but I think that maybe she like a, it's like, did she want to give him a chance to say something? Cause she asked him like three times over the course of that day. Did anything like what happened last night? And Alex even pointed yeah. out to me, she goes, you would think the husband would pick up on something is off because that's the third time she's re brought it up. And yeah. of course he knows that something did happen last night. And so if mm -hmm. she's asking three times, it's like, she knows it's obvious to me just watching that. She knows, even though we know she knows it's like, he should know because why is she bringing it up three times? And why has she been off all day? Well, something did happen, and so she must have figured it out. I don't know why she didn't actually ask him, but she probably doesn't want to put herself in that situation where she asks him, and then he denies it, and then she has to decide if she believes him or not, you know? Yeah, and she has the, I mean, like, the quote-unquote evidence to prove that, you know, he's lying, allegedly. Like, even though, I, I mean, mean, he didn't actually go through with anything from what we saw, but... I mean, there was a fair amount of bad things happening in that, that hotel room. That night. So. I think that it's kind of implied that the Mia, not the main, like Lu Lucia or Lu Lucia, I think. I'm not sure, but mm -hmm. she, we saw having sex with Cameron, the other guy. Yeah. Um, Which was really intense, by the way. Like those scenes were more intense than anything we saw in season one, I think. But yeah, um, that. yeah, that was pretty, pretty wild. <laughs> yeah. But then Mia, the other sex worker comes over and asks him, like tries to make out with him and he says no. So then the next morning we see both the girls wake up in Cameron's bed. So I think we can pretty safely assume that um, his name is Ethan, that he did not have sex with either of the girls. But I think he just doesn't want to tell on his friend. And like I said, the director is always trying to have something be bad in every character. I feel like his thing is that he did grow up without money and he did grow up less popular. Like he didn't get the girls. 
So I think he wants to show to his friends that he is worthy now, but he also is a good guy and he doesn't like cheat. So I think he's just bummed out right now that like, even though he has money, he's, he's still not cool. Like his friend Cameron, you know? Yeah. And that's a really good observation too. Sarah had a, like Sarah suggested something to me that I didn't really think about right away, but maybe he just doesn't, maybe he plans on saying something, but he just doesn't want to like say it while they're on vacation. You know, they still have this whole trip to go through together. And obviously they're like, Maybe they, he doesn't want to, like, blow up, you know. Because if he tells his wife, there's a good chance that she might mention it to the other girl because they're quote on quote best friends now. And um, they seem to – I mean, they're not – I don't think they're actually friends, but they seem to have some sort of relationship and kind of had a, a couple moments in the last episode. Maybe he just uh, doesn't want to, like, cause so much drama and ruin his trip that he's going to have to spend so much time with them anyway and, like, jeopardize his own marriage while he's in a like different place, not comfortable away from home. I don't know. That's one thing that Sarah suggested where just maybe this isn't just the time to do it. Yeah. Okay. So what did you think of um, Mark? Who's the dad of so there's like the family. That's like the rich family in season one and Mark's the dad. Mm-hmm. And he's the one that in the beginning, he thinks he has testicular cancer, but then later he finds out, that his dad died of, or his dad died of AIDS and not cancer because he was dad was gay. Mm -hmm. And just the whole like shockwave that he goes through after finding out all of that information and just the relationship with Mark and his son Quinn is just so like the show is just perfect at showing all these awkward situations. Yeah. You know, I mean, watching them, like, I just, I think for me, for Mark, uh, the relationship with him and his son was great, but I liked the relationship with him and his wife a, a lot more. Um, I thought they were just, like, the way that they talked to each other and then the way that they would both communicate with the daughter's friend that was there that's, you know, not really part of that wealthy status, which is right. in, incredible. I mean, they were just, so stuck in their ways and really didn't have a kid like didn't care about i mean they 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 do the like stereotypical like we care but we really are gonna we care enough but we really don't care at all type of thing where we might donate money to a cause but we're probably not going to participate in it at all type of thing where they just do it for the clout yeah um but yeah i love that relationship uh and like how that all planned out Quinn, um, <laughs> probably one of my favorite characters from the first season, for sure. Just, I remember when he is just like basically gets kicked out of the hotel by his sister and her friends, and he just ends up sleeping on the beach for the whole trip, which <laughs> seems to work out for him a little bit. But I just love that part in the first, it might have been the first or second episode where you know, he goes out to the beach. And he, like, gets his phone destroyed, so he can't play games anymore. And he just is having, like, a complete breakdown during that episode. He just can't do anything he wants to do. And he's like, oh, my God, I have to socialize with these fucking people now with my family. So, yeah. I, he was he was. Phenomenal. I love how... I loved him. Yeah, so his sister's name is Olivia. And she's like... Mom, he can't sleep in the living room because he's going to be jacking off to Paula all night. And the yeah. mom's like, oh, my God, you know. Well, then, like, we like I kind of felt bad for him. I was like, no, he's not going to do that. Like, geez, you know, that was pretty harsh. And then, yeah, and then we see him watching poor jacket off on the beach. And so it's like, oh, OK, I guess he uh, I guess he probably Definitely would have done that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um so the the dynamic with um what well, you were talking about how the dad how so Paula ha- is from another race her back her heritage is something different but they don't say what it is I don't think she's Hawaiian but she has another race or another heritage and they really do a good job of showing um a difficult situation that she's put in. So she comes with the wealthy family, but she gets offended on how the hotel has like basically 
dislocated or displaced the local Hawaiian people to build their hotel. And now the cost of living has gone up and the Hawaiians have to work in the hotel in order to have a job. And so it's really kind of a messed up situation. And so Paula is always defending Kai and that situation and she gets mad at everybody. But then at the end, Kai gets arrested and Paula has to kind of choose between helping Kai and telling the truth or keeping her own status because like through this wealthy family, she gets status. Like she gets to do all the nice things and she ends up choosing not to help Kai. So it kind of shows just like, I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you're like a plus one and you got invited to an event that you really wouldn't have got invited to normally, but somehow you got invited through a friend or through a coworker and you're getting like a taste of what life is like when you aren't normally invited and what are people willing to do to keep that status, you know, even like this, like shut down their own values. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, definitely interesting. Um, I just, yeah, I felt bad for her for most of the season or during that, during that whole span. Um, you know, she probably was never comfortable during the whole thing, didn't have anyone other than probably Kai that she could really talk to, honestly. I mean, obviously, she came with her friend Olivia. I mean, so she had some relationship there. But it's, as we kind of learned throughout the first season, that she doesn't trust her at all because Olivia seems to go behind her back and try to, like, get with all of her, you know, guy friends that she's interested in. So it, it is, it's just very interesting on the tr- in the choice that she makes because you know being an outsider looking in of this like on the outside of the show looking in it's like you think that you know you'd be the good guy you'd go and help Kai and you'd hopefully save his day and you know it all ends happily and peacefully but in life that's probably not going to happen I mean he, he you know he stole a lot of money like a lot of valuables that are worth a lot of money looking at probably multiple felonies I mean in the way that our system is set up, he's he's probably not going to get any type of like leniency and he'll be probably screwed in the long run. So, you know, we hope that like looking out that you'd want to go help him. But I think a lot of people in her situation probably would do what she did. And that's kind of the sad truth of it. Yeah. Um, all right. We're at time. I just want to ask you, um, who do you think is going to be the character that dies in season two? Um, and do you think it'll be more than one? Because we only see one dead body, but one of the hotel workers says that there's actually more than one. I don't know if they're all related, but definitely want you to guess who do you think is the body floating in the water? Okay. Um, a hard question I, really, <laughs> I don't know uh and i feel like it's last season it, i mean it wasn't it was obvious but it wasn't obvious if you like you love lamont and you're like he's not gonna die he's like the best part of the show and he's dead so maybe maybe it's uh well well, while well, you're kind of thinking, let me give you let me give you some a little thought here. This is what Alex mm-hmm. said. So, do you remember? There's a character named Quentin, and he is a very wealthy man from Palermo. He becomes friends with Tanya, and he invites yeah. Tanya to come and hang out with him and all of his buddies. Well, he tells her a story about an island that they're going to go visit next episode, and the story on the island is that. There was a husband and wife and the husband dies and then the widow won't let anybody like come onto that island. And these people try to buy it from her and she won't let them. And then her body ends up dead. And Tanya's all like, oh, they killed her. And so Alex is speculating that whoever does die is going to die on that island and their body will like slowly come back towards the main water where like the woman at the beginning goes in and discovers the dead body. 
I don't know if that's true. I mean, that's just Alex guessing, but I thought that was a pretty dang good theory. And so there is something. I think Sorry, it's going to be a man. I think it's going to be a man, but like. I can't figure out what Quentin he's that he's the guy that's taking Tanya to the island like he's gay. So he it's like, why is he super into Tanya? He has like gone out of his way to invite Tanya to everything. And I can't figure out why, like what's his motive. And I do think that somebody I think Alex could be right that somebody might die on this island. Yeah, I mean, it's a really good possibility. Maybe it's um, maybe it's the son. What's it starts with an A? I'm sorry, I'm terrible with names. Uh, Jake. Albie. Yeah. Oh, Albie. Albie the, yeah. yeah. Maybe it's him. Maybe he is. Maybe Jake's out on the with um, uh, Portia is out on the little island out there, and he wants to just see her, and things get things get crazy. I don't know. I honestly could I could see him dying. I mean. He's such a nice guy. You don't think anything's gonna happen. Bad's gonna happen. So he just wants the best, and those people tend to end up getting screwed in the end anyway. So, I that's my pick. I'm gonna go Albi, probably out of left field a little bit, but we'll see what happens. Okay. Oh, I don't know. It's so tough, but I really want to say Cameron, but. Like Daphne and Cameron are married and Daphne's the one that finds the body. And if it was her husband, yeah. why would she like, if you remember, she doesn't do anything to help the person. She just comes to well, shore and, I want that. but she doesn't like grab the person and try to pull them to shore. Like if it was her husband, I feel like she would have like tried to save him, you know, but she almost Maybe just like, she acts... he wasn't cheating on her all the time. Yeah. Um, I don't know. But... Okay, I'm going to go with Jake. So I'm going to go with, I like your thinking around it being Alby because that's the group that goes to that island, I think. But I'm going to think that maybe Alby kills Jake because he's mad because Jake stole Portia from him. So just a, I feel like that's got to be wrong. But, but do you go think... You know, in the the spirit of the show, you know, the the successful people tend to get off and don't really have consequences. Do you think Alby receives any? If that were to happen, do you think Alby gets in trouble at all, or do you think he just gets away with it? I think he would get away with it because his his dad is very wealthy from Hollywood. I mean, his dad basically went up to the manager and was like, "These two sex workers are here with me, so yeah, so. they're allowed to come and go." Yeah, I mean that's a good assessment too. I feel like it could be anybody. Uh, I think it is gonna. I think you're right. I think there's a good chance it's probably gonna be a guy. Um, but I guess we'll see. And maybe there's multiple people. Who knows? I also think that um, his name's Bert, but the old grandpa. Mm -hmm. I think he is just gonna die. But I could be wrong. Somebody did just die last episode. Who was that? Um, the piano player. I think the piano player is for sure dead. I don't so think he maybe... died. I think he had a, a bad reaction with it. I think he's just he just went to the hospital. I don't think we know that he died yet. Okay, you're right. We don't know for sure, but I think he's gonna die. And mm -hmm. I also think Bert, the old grandpa, is gonna die. And then. I think maybe Jake. Yeah. But I kind of just feel like it's going to be three people because they said multiple. I don't think it's just going to be two. Yeah. Do you think it wouldn't? The thing is, like, with the, the first season, you know, it's, it's the everything bad happens really, in, in all honesty, to people who work at the hotel, right? So maybe in, point. like, the people that are the people that are less fortunate and that are getting kind of screwed over by society. So maybe it's got to be someone like that that ends up getting biting the bullet. Um, but from like a male perspective, I really don't know, you know, other than the piano player, but who really that could be because everyone is on the male side is, at least in this season, is pretty successful. I guess I'll be, you know, he is younger, but he did graduate from Stanford and probably is looking at a pretty great life once he gets back to America. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, one of the 
The only male hotel worker I can think of right now is that Rocco, and he's like one of the main reception people, but he's the one that tells the GM that all the people died. So it's not him. Yeah. So just something else to think about, I guess. It could be Greg too. So Tanya's husband that like is going to leave her, but he went back to Denver, but I do think he's going to come back. Do you, what do you, who do you think he was talking to on the phone that night? I think he's like with another woman, like he's leaving Tanya and it is, yeah. I mean, honestly, I think it's just some other woman. I, I don't think it's somebody we know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's probably, I think that's true too. So that's kind of where I was at as well. I just was curious. But I mean, I, I don't think he's going on business. I think he's just going to see this chick, see, it, see how she's doing. And then he's going to come back to Tanya and, and kind of dump her. He kind of, I mean, in a sense, really just used her completely to get treatment for what he had going on with him health wise. And he's, He's out of there. I mean, this guy's been married how many times? Three times already? And no problem, I guess, for him going to the fort. Yeah, I feel like um, it wasn't like he met her total, totally randomly. And he told her about being like he was going to die right away. Tanya paid for his treatment. He ended up surviving. I think he feels bad to a certain degree. But nobody could stay with Tanya. And I don't blame him for that. Um, but yeah, he does kind of, he body shames her with those macaroons, you know, <laughs> and it's like, I just, I will tell when she, he's like, I got a swamp crotch. And then she like pans back there. He's like, you're really thinking of me. I'm just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. Yeah. I think Sarah's probably right. Tanya is. I mean, I don't laugh out loud with more with anybody more than Tanya. So she might be the funniest one. Now that Armand's gone. I mean, Armand yeah, I... when when Armand would go off the rails when he like lot went off the wagon and started drinking and doing all of his drugs and hooking up with that boy, uh Dylan that was like half of his age. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then Shane catches him. <laughs> I love that moment. Yeah, it's so you know, fantastic. Yeah. Such a, it's so good. I love it so much. I mean, I'm just so, I hate, you know, part of me is like, it's cool that it comes out every week. You can't just go through it like a weekend. But I just want to watch it every day. I just want to finish it. And I want to know what happens. So uh, it's, it's just it's like fun to get back to that weekly show like Game of Thrones. Yeah, I know. I'm so glad there's something good on. Um, you could always go back and binge season one, you know. Yeah, that's true, but we'll see. I just want to finish this season. I'm excited to see what happens. 